Previously, you sailed with us as we left the UK for good, crossed the English Channel and arrived in the French city of Brest. This time we explore the area while pinned down by the weather. We check out a little of the city, but once out at anchor, we're amazed at some of the hidden history. We discovered two absolutely mind-blowing locations. One of them, it turns out, entry was forbidden. This is Intrepid Bear, a 40-foot sailboat off to explore the world with her crew, Ian and Kate. Come aboard and let's see what's out there. So the yellow flag is down. Just the courtesy flag there now. So we've got a, term, a day to go and explore Brest. So let's go see what we can find. Brest is a port city with a large French naval base. The city itself was heavily bombed during World War II, with most of the buildings destroyed and only a couple of pre-war buildings remaining. One of those is the Chateau de Brest we'll see shortly. And for some reason, the normally camera shy Kate was in a mischievous mood. So uh, over there is the marina where we are, and this area over here. Sorry. This area over here is the, all the military port, the naval base. You're not allowed to go over there. Probably best not film it too much either. Kate's clearly in a silly mood today, so I'll make sure that goes in the video. That'll teach her. And this rather impressive structure, which I've not filmed from the best angle, is the Chateau de Brest. It's one of France's largest fortresses. Construction was started by the Romans in the 3rd century and it's been expanded ever since. It was also the final stronghold for the Nazis in the area in World War II, but it survived the war largely intact. It's quite some castle. The marina in is called the Marina du Chateau, so I'm sure that's the chateau in question. And then quite a bridge over here. And in the distance, above Kate's head, some cable cars over there. Might go and have a look at those. See where they go, what they're like. We didn't know where it led to, but we figured the cable car would give us a great view over the docks area. Big dry docks. The docking facilities appeared much bigger than any ships that could get under the bridge, but we discovered how that works later on. The cable car deposited us straight into some kind of strange exhibition hall with an eclectic collection of items. It does look like a kill. So all these animals are made from bits and pieces of um, musical instruments. The legs of this spider are violin bows. Yeah, loads of parts of the bow as well. Yeah. There's some uh, quite cool stuff in here, but it kind of doesn't match together. You've got industrial machines, the boat, the animals made of musical instruments, and quite a lot of empty space. Cool, but strange. Turns out the boat was not just any old boat. So this is actually the Imperial Barge built for Napoleon in 18 something, which I'll have to check out in a bit. Um, uh, yeah, it's quite something. Yeah, I was just reading that Napoleon, Bonaparte and Josephine um, went on this barge into Antwerp. And then onwards around the city to see what else we could see in our brief stay. What do you think of that building up there? It's pretty spooky. It's an old prison, I think. I don't my French isn't that good. The Oms. Suffering. Not sure what's going on here. Is she trying to save him or is she trying to throw him overboard? He's got a boat hook, she's got a dress on. He looks like a sailor type person, but um, not quite sure if she's saving him or, or what. And just before we finish this walk, how do those big ships get up to those docks? So the other side of this bridge, or upstream of the bridge, there's some hefty dry docks for probably naval ships. You don't think it's quite high enough underneath the bridge. 
for the ships to get under, but it would appear that this central section of the bridge they will lift up if they needed to. Um, this connection, there's these great big wires here. So yeah, a lifting bridge. Quite a feat of engineering. And after all that walking, a treat in the evening. Music and dinner and wine, it's all good. And you may remember there was a storm inbound, hence we hadn't gone straight across from Falmouth to Spain. And once again, once the bulk of the storm had passed but the wind remained quite strong from the southwest, we moved the boat over to a nice sheltered anchorage in behind the Roskenvel Peninsula. And it was from that anchorage we went ashore and discovered some amazing historical places. Kate had discovered the sites on the internet, but it wasn't until we rounded the last corner that we realised just how breathtaking this fortified island is. precarious descent down to this fortress by the water. As we got our first closer view we couldn't believe our eyes. Just have a look at the place when you come round and get a view of it. Wow, that's quite some, quite some structure over there. Walk in the middle. Yes. Say that again. I'm glad that's as wide as it is. Yes. That'd be quite nerve wracking. So, this incredible place is Les Ilo de Capuchin, so named due to a nearby rock that is said to look like a Capuchin monk in prayer. And, even more incredible than the dramatic rugged location is the fact that a fort was built here in 1848, an incredible feat of engineering. It was clearly added to in World War II and bears numerous scars of the war. I'm no expert, but these look a lot like bullet holes in the wall. It's probably World War II stuff, this bit. And, then, and look at these holes, these are definitely shell holes. There's some serious damage done to this thing. Look. I didn't notice these before, but look at those two. Yeah. They are proper big naval shell holes. Or Modern graffiti, I suspect. Yeah. Got all these things on the roof up here, with hanging points all over. It's rail. A great big rail. A rail for a gun or for ammunition, who knows? Whilst the history of places like this are fascinating, you cannot forget the absolute horror that it must have been to be here in wartime. Obviously open somewhere because there's wind coming up. And there was yet more to discover. If you thought the engineering above ground was amazing, wait till you see what they dug out from the solid rock underneath. Careful over here, there's like some rails and stuff. 
To save weight carrying the dinghy up the beach we had rowed to shore and luckily the sea was much flatter on the east side of the peninsula. But just look at those clouds behind me to the left. Look at that rain, seconds to spare. You can see the cloud up there. It'll stop in a minute but wow. Literally just got on board. The next day we again set out on a hike to the west side of the peninsula, this time in search of Fort Robert, or Robert as I dare say it is pronounced. We knew that we were in the area, but there were no signposts, and we were struggling to find it, so we sent the baby drone up to see if we could spot a path from the air. This was the structure we were looking for, but from ground level it was all just trees, but from the air a path soon became visible. So although we'd spotted the path from the air, we were in for more of an adventure than we'd anticipated. Yeah, so just gonna, you know, just literally in the trees. And there's another great big structure, very similar to the one we saw on the island of Capuchins. Great big room, look, a lot of this hangar shaped. We didn't know it at the time, but the drone had spotted this too. The strength. The back room off as well. It's very dark. You don't like Even the camera can't see him, really. Dark. Yeah, a lot of this stuff, you just come around a corner and you look through a little hole in a bush and then boom, our room. And then the vegetation opened up and we had found what we were looking for. Well, that, hopefully, is Fort Robert. Robert. It turns out that Fort Robert is a multi-level fortification with interconnecting tunnels and what we had found was the barracks for the lower gun battery, which had been built in 1857 but reused by the Germans in World War II. The hangar-like structure we found first was the power plant for the barracks and the lower guns. So after a hell of a trek through the bushes, this, as far as we can make out, is Fort Robert. It's quite impressive. And how anyone ever got here, I have no idea. Why? And 
there's a staircase here and all sorts of Wow, what an incredible place. Massive hole in the back wall there, whether that's time or a bomb, who knows? That's a huge hole there. Could have been blown away or just could have been age. Staircase up to nowhere because all the floors have gone. Incredible. We'll definitely try and find out a bit more history about this place and uh, when it was built. Who used it? Did it have a role in World War II? Amazing. As we've now found out, it was used by the Germans during World War II. And the more I look at these pictures, the more I think that the big hole in the back wall would have been caused by a heavy artillery shell or an aerial bomb. Absolutely incredible structure built into the cliffs, virtually built into the cliffs. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to know, love to know more about the history. There's a big hole in the roof up there. I'd love to know if that's age, collapsed through age, or was it blown up in the war? Who knows? It's a pile of masonry at the bottom there. Kate's found the loo. ancient continental hole in the ground toilet. It's got a window. Oh, well you can shoot people whilst you're having a... enough? Yes. You want to go back through the jungle? Well, I suppose we could fly, but yeah. <laughs> We've got to go back through the jungle. Through okay. The jungle. Lead on, jungle girl. Sadly, the DJI mini drone is not built for carrying people, so it was back through the heavy undergrowth for us. We later found information on the internet that this site was closed to the public. But what an amazing place, even if it was the Forbidden Fortress. Back into the light. This is a random armoured car parked in the clearing. Fascinating stuff. All right, back to the boat for lunch. This part of France is littered with World War II history and much of it is hidden and abandoned. There must be many more fascinating sites like these ones that we found. But we were impatient to get across Biscay. The weather was not making it easy, but we had hatched a plan. Join us next time when we do finally strike out across the bay and make it to Spain. As always, thank you for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel, give us a like or leave a comment, as it all helps, it really does. Cheers for now.